and going. Okay, perfect. Uh, welcome to yet another video code review. Uh, today we're looking at const expersted string, which I know has been um, at the forefront of many people's minds for a very long time. Um, so we have a lot of actually interesting things to talk about here. Um, we have some interesting things to work around in terms of how we're testing this at the moment, given the kind of in progress work being done in various stages. Um, supporting supporting context per string, um, as well as some uh, complications around the small string optimization um, that we're going to have some interesting code to look at um, as a result. And um, also, we just have looking at the proposal, just about 22 pages of just changing um, string function. Uh, declarations to have const expr on them. So um, this is one of the parts of the review that I actually haven't done yet, which is actually cross reference to see that all of this is being changed. So I don't think we'll necessarily have to go through every single line of it, but just to give an idea of the number of things going on here, we have 22 pages of, for the most part, just um, yeah, slapping const expr on things. Um, I see that Casey wants to see Gobble. He actually just got groomed. Uh, Stefan can attest if uh, if all goes well and I'm in a good mood at the end of this, I'll post some groomed gumball pictures in the chat. <laughs> Maybe some snow ones too. Okay, so one of the first things just to kind of get started again, I think that some of us have been looking at this before um, and it's been brought up, I think at least on the Const Expert Machinery Preparations PR. Um, but we have this tracking issue filed on our GitHub um, that's just kind of keeping track of the status of different parts of the Const Expert containers that need to be implemented or things that are kind of missing. Um, ooh, this actually needs to be updated because this has been checked in. Um, but we have various PRs linked that are uh, dealing with different parts of const expert containers. Um, we have active claim bugs, um, all of which I believe have been uh, fixed and are being uh, cherry picked to claim 12, which is awesome. We have several C1XX bugs. We have a lot of granularity here, um, keeping track of the DEMCOM issues as well as the internal PRs. Um, that fix them and the internal bugs tracking them. Um, when there are workarounds, we try to document that as well. Um, but this is essentially, there are a lot of kind of pieces in the code right now that are working or not working for very specific reasons. And we're trying to kind of keep track of that so we can go back and undo these things and we're able to digest, digest fixes that come down the line. Um, we also have several active EDG bugs. Um, I think actually most of which are in vector, kind of. Kind of, that's kind of true. There's one that's just like breaking for everything in string. Um, so who knows really, but yeah, keeping track of all these things, um, different approaches between specifically Clang and MSVC in terms of um, the kind of approach to dynamic allocation, because there are some significant differences um, just in terms of what each compiler has chosen to allow or disallow. Um, and so as a result, we have to kind of modify our code paths. And this actually needs to be updated because there's been some development since uh, I wrote this, but this is explaining kind of some uh, next steps, what we are waiting on, what we're not waiting on and how we can move forward. So if you're ever wondering what's going on, I try to keep this as up to date as possible, though obviously I have a few things I need to revisit. Um, one of the things that, um, I, I guess I could actually pull up the regular uh, um, string code without the changes in it for a moment just to talk about the uh, SSO aspect of things. Um, SSO is that small string optimization and I'm happy to have Stefan or Casey or I think Charlie's on too, to chime in a little bit more about this. Um, but essentially, from my understanding, um, if a string is small enough that we could just store the actual contents of the string instead of a pointer to the string's data, why don't we just do that? Um, so we have, let's see, it's a union BXTY here um, that essentially does this work um, to either store a pointer to the data or just store a buffer of the data if the uh, string is small enough. 
Um, and this is uh, in string val. Yep. That is used in basic string. Um, and this is what does that work to kind of make that decision. And so there's a lot of work kind of throughout string that checks to see whether we are large string engaged or whether we are small string engaged. Can we become small um, if we just have had our size reduced a lot or do we need to grow and so on. So there's a lot of logic around that. Um, but we actually found when implementing context for string that this was not going to work for us. There were a lot of proposals about how to potentially work with this union VXTY um, and make small string optimizations function decently. But there are some complications around being able to switch active union members in ConstExpr, um, as well as um, being able to, like being forced to use construct at when we are um, creating things in ConstExpr um, rather than a placement new. And how we were able, would or would not be able to switch active union members using that call. That's a very vague <laughs> sort of hand wavy um, explanation of why we were not able to use the kind of typical existing code paths here. Um, but quite honestly, that is my current recollection because at some point it was just like, there's enough complication here. We determined we can't do this very reasonably. So we're just going to disable small string optimization for ConstExpr. Oh yes, I can zoom in, Charlie. Sorry about that. Um, is that better for anyone or everyone? Stefan is smiling at least, so I think that we are okay. It's it's um, more readable. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I please do let me know. I tend to have things very small, and I'm just not as aware of it as I should be. So it's a little bit. I'll make it one bigger. Okay. Um. Any questions on that uh, from my very vague explanation, which probably leaves some things unexplained, but or any additional explanation anyone else wants to offer up? All right, I will take silence as uh, no additional comments. Um, but that is one thing that we're going to have to be very aware of, and one specific aspect of this PR that's going to be significantly more complicated than the vector PR, which for the most part, there were some is constant evaluated pathways. There were a few, can I use construct at versus new here? But for the most part, it was just slapping that context for 20 container macro on a bajillion functions. Um, so this is something we're gonna to have to keep in mind here. Um, otherwise, the last thing that I wanted to mention before actually starting in on the product code review is, we should actually be able to see all of this now. I'll just unview all of these things so that we can actually, actually, no, I won't because those are boring things that I actually made changes to. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, um, trying to find our examples. Yes. So given that tracking issue of, you know, all of these bugs via Clang, via, um, MSBC and EDG. Um, what we're what our current approach is is to essentially disable the lines of the test that are triggering these various compiler bugs, check them in to both our GitHub repo and mirrored to the MSBC repo to allow uh, the compiler team to be able to use our code to um, protect against any regressions in compiler fixes that they've had for ConstExpr containers that we've requested and do additional bug fixes that come up. Um, we've essentially found that the loop of us digesting a new version of the compiler, us trying to compile things and then finding bugs and then reporting them and then again, waiting for those fixes to come down the line, we're just taking way, way too long. Um, so it sounds like from my uh, recollection that this MSVC internal testing sort of approach was used in um, testing modules um, between the compiler team and I think Stefan in particular was kind of helping helping deal with this so that we were able to you know help test and have code that is ready to be flipped on once all those compiler fixes come down the line and again that co the compiler team has a much tighter feedback loop of being able to um, discover and fix bugs um, rather than um, yeah, as Cameron's mentioning in the chat, a, a two month loop uh, um, between finding bugs, getting fixes, finding more bugs. Uh, Tyler has a question. 
insights into how to decode names. How does BXTY convey the idea of a string buffer, for example? This predates my time. Um, I'll have to let Casey answer that in the chat currently. Uh, BXTY is the imaginatively named type of BX. BX, I'm sure, is B for buffer, but as to why someone decided a, it was a good name, we'll never know. Because X just means all other characters. It's basically regex for all other yeah, characters. Yeah, following. X in a variable name in the STL generally means we can't have single letter names. <laughs> <laughs> right, so if you had underscore B, then you add an X, whatever. There, now it's not a single letter name anymore. So yeah, we have a lot of really weird things like that where somebody could have picked a better name for this, but they didn't. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is that in the VC6 era, uh, I think Dinkmore's original code did use single letter names. Um, and at some point they were expanded, but that was uh, before my time. Okay, cool. Um, I want to take this opportunity actually to declare some very exciting news that uh, working with Elnar actually just today, I have um, removed all of these kind of if lines throughout the entire test that uh, is specifically kind of disabling things for MSVC, um, sent him pre-processed repros, and he has confirmed that with the 1610 uh, preview one compiler, this test compiles perfectly which is very exciting <laughs> because up until now, we've had moderate test coverage period for uh, this PR. So uh, that's really great. So I have um, preemptively inserted this defined MSVC internal testing. Um, if you recall in constex for vector, we actually had this commented out because we did not know yet if things would actually compile and run and pass internally. Um, the idea here being that this macro is only defined when we run the tests in the internal MSVC repo through contest, um, but not in our GitHub CI. Um, but because I have confirmed and Elnar has confirmed that we are in good shape here, once this does get checked in, this should just be able to flip on immediately, which is very, very exciting. Um, so that is great. But I wanted to mention that one little bit about the testing setup because it's a little bit weird. All right, any other questions? Cameron has a fun emoji in the chat. Is it a firework? Or a mosaic of some kind? <laughs> Either one is absolutely appropriate in this case, assuming it's celebration. OK, uh, well, on that note, let's talk about the actual code changes. Um, the ones that I have viewed here are, for the most part, unsurprising or not very exciting here. Um, we have several skipped tests and expected results fails. Um, these are things that are, uh, I believe they were icing because of existing uh, CL bugs. And um, this one at least I think is an ice. This one is a different type of error if I remember correctly. But regardless, they have been reported. They are being recorded here. And both these issues, I think the sealed temporary passing issue should be fixed in 16.10 preview one. This one might be preview two if I'm remembering correctly, but regardless, we can go back and re-enable these at a later date. Those are just being um, recorded there. This we have, oh, this is an interesting one. We can actually, I don't really wanna go dig through the conversation to find this. There is a tautological constant out of range compare um, diagnostic that was being issued here. Um, and this was actually discovered a while ago by MISCO and we determined that this was the best way to kind of deal with this. Um, so that is an existing change there. And I will, I might come back and look at that and revisit that conversation a little bit later, but um, that is does not seem too crazy interesting. Uh, and then otherwise these are again, for some reason, this is icing, but should be, be should be able to be re-enabled soon. Um, so that's an existing test. And then this is just copyright banner, good, usual latest matrix, not concepts matrix, um, good for that new added test. And then here, this was something I just added. We have the feature test macro um, test here, which was not there previously. And I added it, so I probably don't really need to review it, but I guess I will. I usually just compare with the one underneath it. 
uh, we do have this not defined claim here. This matches the constant X per 20 container and the actual definition of the feature test macro uh, because we have this bug that, again, will be fixed in claim 12, but it is disallowing mutable in constant expert contexts and that messes with our iterator debug machinery. Um, so we're still waiting on that. Uh, error, not the correct thing. I actually did go and check the feature, uh, feature test macro page, so I won't go and open that up at the moment. Um, and then otherwise, end ifs, else, if def is defined error. I think that that looks good. Okay, now let's get to the slightly more interesting things. Um, as I mentioned, yep, we have not defined claim here for the actual definition of the feature test macro, also documented, so that should be good. Uh, and this is just claim format, reformatting things here because um, we're kind of splitting up these lines and these lines below. And then we're adding this to our paper list. Okay, let's look at, now let's look at X string, the more interesting stuff going on. So we are here, this is in care traits, it looks like, where we shouldn't have to make any substantial changes, actually. This has already been const x for 20 um, through previous work. It looks like uh, Miss Go here was just doing nicer wrapping of the comments um, so that they don't wrap the parameter list. So that looks good. And now I think we are still actually, yeah, in care traits, but this is, a again, doing the same thing, except what did he change here to make this nicer? I guess there was just a new one? This is not exciting. This is not important. Maybe, maybe claim format's doing a nicer thing. Regardless, um, here we have a little bit of interesting stuff. One thing I'll mention, and because this came up in const expert vector as well, um, there is the question of whether we should do if def cpp lib is constant evaluated here or const expert string. Both would essentially do the same thing, but this is a slightly stricter, um, stricter conditional here. And so we can just, you know, eliminate this code if we're not, um, we don't have this defined just yet for whatever reason. So that was the reasoning behind that. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it also kind of helps centralize why we're doing this things that we're doing. It's for specifically this feature. Um, here, this is making sure to actually go and construct the character at this next instead of equals or an assignment here. Um, and I believe this is because we need to make sure that we go through and actually construct something there. if for some reason, this is not default constructible in constant context. So that seems fine. Construct add is magically blessed by the const expert fairy. Uh, it looks like that's all the changes that we need in care traits. And looking through previously, yes, all the appropriate functions have been const expert. All right, now we're moving on to string const iterator. Um, slapping const expert 20 container on various things. This is rewrapping, that's fine. Uh, we do have this that is being added, but this is just an issue with special member functions not being um, defaultly made const expert. Filed, tracked, decent workaround. Um, and then otherwise, this is just adding const expert container 20 here. Nothing super fun and interesting happening here. The same sort of things being checked. Um, and we've had the conversation previously, but even though many of these STL verify checks are going to be already happening through the compiler, since we're talking at compile time now, um, it's still worth keeping these here just for the sake of um, let's not continue to split off more and more constant versus runtime code paths. Um, they don't really hurt much. All right, const expert 20 container on various things. More STL verifies, continuing on. All, basically all the member functions of string const iterator. I'm just expanding all these regions just to make sure there's not some random colon colon new or something else hiding. Since we're enabling this for MSBC now, I'm not as concerned about that, but you know, whoever, who knows what's going on? As we kind of mentioned with like the SSO stuff, 
there isn't the same like, oh, the compiler will, ju compiler will, ju will just check this for us, like colon colon new is just not allowed. Um, there is potential for like some invariant of what we believe the size or the reserved capacity to be um, at different points in time. So just trying to make sure that we're not missing something in addition to the changes being made being valid. Right, this is just putting const expert 20 on all this stuff. This is rewrapping the comment. That looks good. And same. Great, and then, okay, that's the end of string const iterator. And then we have the operator plus, which is not being made const x per 20. Do we care about that? Bug, bug, bug. <laughs> yeah, I suspect we should care about that. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> All right, well, I can't actually comment on this because it's too far away from lines being changed. So I'll just put it here since it's towards the bottom and say, I believe the um, operator plus, oh, this is, I'm going to. Um, Will be made const x for 20 container. The signature is actually um, offset plus iterator. It's not adding two oh, iterators. Thank you. I'm not going to sound very nice in my comments because I'm going to be the one going through and making these changes. Uh, if the tests are passing, despite this bug being present, you might also point out that this indicates a lack of test coverage. <laughs> Just to make sure, you know, that they know, hey, you should also add test coverage for this because you missed it. Note to the reader being myself. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, that's good to know. See, that's why we expand these little regions. <laughs> okay, next we're looking at pointer traits, string const iterator. These look like they actually are all pretty much already going to be, oh, all the if and ifs make my eyes swim. This is already const expert, so that looks good. All right, now we move on to string iterator where we'll, where we'll have to do very similar things. We again have this workaround here. Um, I made sure to make these no except for consistency. Um, and adding const x for 20 to this operator star. Then we're just going to put const x for 20 container on pretty much everything else here. Nothing else funky going on. These are very nice short. Um, function bodies. OK, and that's actually the end of uh, the string iterator. It looks like we did correctly remember to mark this, the uh, string iterator operator plus. So that is good. OK, now we have pointer traits of string iterator. And this is const expert. And we look OK here. Great. OK, string iter types. I don't actually know what this does. That's a weird bit of machinery intended to avoid a bloat of mangled names. Um, when we added support for allocators, I think around the CS plus 11 time frame, um, the base class started being templated on type name, allocator traits of allocator, double colon value type, type name, allocator traits of allocator, double colon size type, and so forth, all to handle um, fancy pointers. And then this was actually bloating um, some angle names beyond 4096 characters, which triggered ominous um, 
uh, warnings about, oh, you know, we're going to have to hash this in the PDB. It was just a nightmare. Um, so this thing in the simple types is intended to avoid making mingled names of the classes too long, especially when uh, there's no fanciness involved. So if you just have a std allocator, we end up using something called simple types, um, where the mingled name does not need to encode all this stuff, and we can just hard code size T and all that stuff. Um, that warning is no longer actually emitted by the tool set. Um, the hashing still happens, but we just don't emit that warning. Um, in theory, we could probably eliminate this stuff in vnext, um, but that's why it's there. All right. Cool, thank you. All right, well then on that note, let's move on to StringVal, which is the thing that contained the fun uh, union. Okay, so we have, a, there are going to be a few outstanding comments that I either wanted input on or I haven't gotten back to Ms. on yet. So we can actually take the opportunity to discuss them here if they seem particularly relevant. This is, oh, he has just been making nice things, making uh, the move to member initializers instead of initializing things here. Um, that we could possibly do. I don't see a reason not to, at least yet. Uh, yeah, and that should, I believe, is the only uh, constructor. So that seems reasonable. Is there motivation to do one over the other? I'd say the motivation for member initializers is that when there are multiple constructors, it makes it harder to forget to initialize anything. Um, so mm. it is a more modern approach. Um, it is a little weird when a constructor mentions some things and not others, um, but we have been using more and more member initializers. All right. I will give this a thumbs up and I can come back and look at this a little bit later, but I have no real objections. It doesn't sound like there are others either. Um, we have some logic here just to do some calculations around um, the length of our internal buffer. So we're going to see buff size kind of floating around as well as alloc mask. Um, this is the roundup mask for allocated buffers. Ah, for depending on the size of the, um, the types that we're dealing with. Um, so we'll see these kind of floating around, but that's again looking to that small string optimization. Otherwise, and again, kind of like we've been saying, we have this large string engage that we're going to see. And this is saying, hey, I'm in uh, union's pointer mode, not buffer mode. So we're going to react as such. So with some of the invariants, because we've determined that we want to turn small string optimization off if we are in const expert mode, we're just always going to be using the pointer. We're always going to be um, allocating that memory. Um, we essentially want to keep that in mind as we're looking through all of this, that all of our is constant evaluated code paths should not be referring to buffer, they should be using pointer. Speaking of which, is this gonna be, if we're large string engaged, we go and give back the pointer. Otherwise, we have this. Is there any issue with even referencing buffer? Or should it be? OK, I'm still working out the exact specifics around <laughs> when we're activating different members of the union. It depends on what you mean by any issues. It's perfectly valid in a constant expression to take the address of an inactive union element, right? We can do that. It's conforming. Whether or not the compiler will allow us to do that or explode, I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, I don't think CL is exploding. So that's All good. Right. We're, we're good then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. Thank you. Uh, then otherwise, we're making this const expert. That seems good. Uh, same thing here. Uh, just doing the const version of this, it looks like. Uh, large string engaged, this is a little bit more of a functional change. And again, kind of like we've been saying, if we are considering const expert strings as a feature, and if we are being evaluated at constant time, we are just, yes, large string engaged. So that's trying to maintain that invariant, and we're just going to have to make sure that that is kept up in terms of our um, other, other becoming small or becoming large, et cetera, uh, functions kind of throughout. OK, we have check offset being const expert. We have check offset exclusive being const expert. 
Um, clamp suffix size, these are pretty simplistic. Um, one specific change that we did have to make was initializing pointer here in this initializer list. That is due to const expert union things. Um, but since we are, if, if we're not const expert, they can just switch back to the buffer. And if we are const expert, then this is all set up and kind of initially activated as the active union member there. Then otherwise, we're making the constructor and destructor for um, the union const expert. And that's all for string bell. Right. All right, background from Stefan on large string engaged in the chat. Feel free to read. I do remember seeing some references to buff size elsewhere in the code, so maybe that's an opportunity to also just look through and see if there's opportunity to bring some clarity there and use large string engaged or if there's a real reason to use buff size. Okay, uh, basic string, we have different kinds of tags being used here. Um, whether we are a concatenating constructor or all of our value allocating constructors. So we'll see those um, later on. And then we get to the meat of things, actual basic string. Okay. There's all sorts of fun stuff kind of being hidden here, but this is internal state and aliases and so on stuff that does not actually need to be const expert because they are not functions. And I don't think there's anything here that needs to be updated. Uh, this is a nice documenting comment around can mem copy val, though in const expert, we cannot mem copy val just as a rule. So um, we'll see that um, wherever this gets referenced, we actually just end up um, making sure we disable that because we don't wanna have to do this work because we just know we can't do it in the first place. And great. All right, moving on to actual constructors. Do I want to? Mm. We're already at 430. I'm trying to decide if I want to go through and actually cross reference all the changes. My general approach for um, verifying that we hit everything here, though it's even more exhausting with this particular paper, is going through and highlighting when I see something that gets hit, that gets changed, that gets updated, so that then one, I can make sure all the changes here exist in the paper and I don't see, I see that everything in the paper has been covered by the PR if there's anything left unhighlighted that needs to be um, changed. Um, I'll, I'll humor us for a little while and if we eventually determine that it's too annoying to do, um, <laughs> we can deal with that at that point. Uh, we have basic string, uh, single reference, basic string reference and allocator, which is somewhere in here. Uh, here. Uh, we have nice things getting our proxy allocator, setting up the proxy, constructing LB contents. We're going to get to all of these functions later on, but uh, given that they are being called from a const expert function and we are not getting further compiler complaints, um, we can be pretty confident at this point at least that they're, they've been made const expert appropriately. Uh, basic string, no arguments, which I believe is there. Uh, basic string taking an allocator. Well, I guess I can do the const expert as well. Uh, basic string, write and offset. I do not have a scroll bar down here. That's lame. Uh, write, offset, and alloc. Is this one? And then right offset count and alloc, right offset count alloc. This is dumb. <laughs> I don't know why I don't have a scroll bar, a horizontal scroll. 
uh, Ellen Pointer and size type, which I think is this guy here. We just have the allocator by default, so we must have that version elsewhere. Perhaps there. So from my recollection, this is the, what is it, the as if rule, as long as we are conforming to the standard as, as if it were as written exactly. So this has the default, uh, default parameter versus us splitting it into two, both this is acceptable as well. Oh, we have Billy here too. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to call you out. I haven't seen you in the chat very much, but I know that uh, Stefan summoned your name, so. I have been summoned, yes. <laughs> very good. Okay, great. So that is that. Now we are on basic string pointer version, and that will be, I assume, two versions of this guy right here. No allocator and allocator versions, yes. This all looks good. Uh, basic string count and care type. And then allocator, non allocator version, non allocator version, and allocator version. So that is again this one here. Is there any reason outside of the code is already here that we chose to split these up, or was this existing when we got the code? I believe that dates back to when we got the code. Um, I think there was some desire to not default construct and then copy construct an allocator. Um, mm. But allocators are generally so cheap that I'm not actually sure why they're split. It affects debugging. Like it, it makes the number of step into's you have to do very high. Ah, before we got just my code. Okay. Yes. So like if it's if it's something you expect users to hammer heavily, it makes sense to keep the overloads. Um, but for like a lot of the obscure stuff we added recently, we didn't bother. Cool. Thanks. Uh, yeah, because it looks like we actually have it in this case down here. Which is interesting. Regardless, I saw in the chat, Tyler had a question about, yeah, constructs for 20 container. And I think Stefan answered things there. Um, I will also mention if you've tuned into previous reviews, there's also constructs for 20 dynamic, which is defined slightly differently um, <laughs> because constructs for 20 dynamic is specifically for P0784, which uh, constructs prizes the allocator traits as well as makes new and delete sort of uh, const expirable, um, which is OK for Clang. But the mutable bug causes the container implementation on our end to not work um, around. We, we can't work around that bug in Clang. So um, const expir 20 dynamic is essentially const expir now uh, in 20 mode. But const expir 20 container still needs to exclude Clang from that, which is why it's a, a separate macro. Well, then eventually I'll just be constructs for 20. OK, uh, this is the template in iterators and allocator. Great. All right, we finally are not looking at a constructor for a moment, but we have construct, which is presumably called from various other constructors here. That's been made const expert, and this seems fine. We have, I believe, in um, one five four six. The constructs for machinery in preparation for string and vector. Already done the work to do all of the guards and kind of proxy machinery. Uh, be made constructs for. That was not a grammatical sentence, but you know what I mean. Okay, and then we have construct again, different version, and another version. All of which are being made const expert. No scary reinterpret casts or anything like that. So I think we're okay. 
Okay, basic string is this guy up here. And now we have a question from Ms. Go. I'm just gonna expand this a little bit here. Uh, this is adding in the is constant evaluated code path. I kind of mentioned before we have this can mem copy val um, above, and we essentially just cannot mem copy val um, when we are in const experts. We're just going to go ahead and pass false here to make sure we disable that right away. Um, yeah, and this is conditioned correctly and structured. Should we file an issue to move this from tag dispatch to if const expert? We already have um, a global tracking issue for that. That's issue 189. I knew you would come up with it. What should we say? Death to tag dispatch. And that that's correct because I haven't actually looked at it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, great. All right, basic string, right, and allocator, that would be this one. Uh, nothing super crazy fancy happening here. The various proxy things as expected. And then we have the same pattern happening. I did this when I first was starting to look at const x for string. Um, is there any better way to do this to make this a little bit less verbose that you can think of? Like potentially, well, I don't know that we can do anything within the actual definition of them copy val to do this. Um, but are there any other suggestions on better ways to structure this? So Billy, Billy suggested false type. Um, Interestingly, hmm. um, you could imagine a helper function. Um, no, you couldn't. You can't vary the type based on a runtime thing. Unfortunately, it would hmm. have to be sort of like a meta function that would say, "Here's take contents. I would like to call you with write, but if you end up being is constant evaluated, then don't actually pass mem copy val." Um, so if it occurred in like a zillion places with a zillion functions, in theory, you could extract out this pattern, but I think that would probably be more effort than it's worth. Okay, let's keep a, a general mental tally of how many times this comes up to, if, if it actually comes up 20 million times, um, <laughs> we can consider it, but um, I don't recall it happening super often, I think maybe three or four times, so thank you. Okay, now we have a basic string and here we're using the string construct, constructor concat tag, um, which I believe means that we don't actually have a, a corresponding constructor in the standard to directly base this on. because this is used internally passing that specific tag, um, probably to simplify some logic since compatibility strings gets very fun. Um, but this is a substantial function. We actually do have to make some changes down here. So let's see what's going on. I'm taking a bajillion arguments. We're using this buff size again. This is to set the new capacity. Here again. Okay, so doing a quick read through of just kind of the logic here to make sure that the logic down here, since we're actually changing things, uh, matches up. This is the new size of what we want to create, left size plus right size, concatenating those two strings. Um, new capacity is buff size minus one. So this would be saying, um, like, if we're just starting out, this is what our capacity is going to be if we're in small mode. We can fit inside that buffer. Um, my data get the buffer do the proxy allocator fun stuff. If my capacity is too small for the size that I'm going to be, I need to calculate my growth, I need to allocate, and I need to um, get the pointer. And then we're going to construct in place the fancy pointer at that union's pointer now. So we're making sure that we're not no longer going to be using buff. We're going to be using putter here. Else if, so. 
thinking in terms of constant time. If we were already going to do larger size, if we're going to do large mode, we are going to still going to do large mode. That seems fine. If we could at runtime, if we would in theory fit inside of the buffer, but we are now being constant evaluated, we essentially have to do the same work down here. Um, we allocate, we unfancy, and we construct in place. We don't need this specifically. Calculate growth, I believe, looks at a reasonable size to become, growing at some fun rate. Should be in here somewhere. I can't type very well. I am having a carpal tunnel flare up, so my arm is all funny. Here is calculate growth. And yeah, doing, yeah. So this is essentially just finding a, a reasonable size to grow to uh, without being you know, too restrictive. So we only grow a reasonable number of times, not like every, every other function call. So of course now I've completely lost my place. I don't think we need calculate growth here. I don't think that there's necessarily harm in calling it. I don't think we need it. Is there any strong disagreement there? So my concern would be not really conformance, but if there's any potential in context per land for something like um, uh, stir plus, you know, X, Y, Z, um, or like, you know, a whole bunch of repeated string concatenations. Mm, um, mm -hmm. If we do something like allocate um, the current capacity, you know, plus one or the capacity we were going to have plus one or something um, and copy the existing stuff over, do we get essentially quadratic time? Um, and it, it's all context per time. So I don't think there's actually a conformance issue, but it would appear mm. to be a throughput issue. Um, like I took this code that was marked as context per, and it runs fine at runtime. But the moment I try to actually evaluate this at compile time, it takes, you know, five minutes to compile. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's the case. It's just whenever I see yeah. um, any sort of allocation stuff that does not go through calculate growth, yeah. Um, the question of could this lead to quadratic time is important. I think I don't think that there would be any harm in calling calculate calculate growth and basically following following the same pattern here. Um, so I can go ahead and make a comment on that to add that in. Um, this does only activate if we are not all if it would only activate repeatedly until we were too big to fit in the buffer. Oh, oh, I see. New capacity starts at the SSO. So, okay, yeah. it only activates if we would. Okay, so it's a one time thing and it really just says allocate 16, 17 bytes instead of, you know, using yeah. the buffer. Okay, so that there's no potential for quadratic. That's right. Yeah. This still would be probably a little more reasonable just to follow that same um, throughput optimization. So I'll make a comment here. Actually, make it on this line. Um, I'm not. Um, I'm not actually sure whether we can call calculate growth. Um, the question that occurs to me is: Is calculate growth 
prepared to handle this case where we would fit inside the buffer that we currently have. Because um, we're, we're trying to disable the SSO, which otherwise the string code really wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think we would need to look at the um, control flow within Calculate Growth um, to see what it would return if called in this scenario. Um, we can do that, or we could also just pass in new capacity plus one. Okay, so it always rounds up to the ALEC mask. And then it increases. Okay, so so it may end up working. Um, that's good. I wasn't I wasn't sure whether it was going to be an issue. Um, it, yeah, it's just that whenever we're yeah reusing code in a way that has never been used before. Very fair. Okay, cool. I will come back up here to where we were before. Great. Okay, and then um, outside of that, well, I guess an additional question that I didn't actually put here but occurs later down uh, in the code from a previous review is that now we have essentially two branches that have almost the exact same code. Here, it might change, right, if we pass something different into Calculate Growth or if we just um, leave it with new size. But um, the best way that I can see to try to combine these into a single branch is to do a weird if open paren all of this include this test or and then the normal test and the rest of the branch which is kind of similarly gross and perhaps less readable but fewer lines of code um, but this this general pattern occurs fairly often because we have if we're in large string mode else if we're in in constant evaluated mode, else small mode. Um, and those first two branches very often do the exact same thing. So I'm guess I'm wondering if we have a general preference as a code base on kind of what style to use here. Any strong opinions are welcome. I, I assume most of these tests are occurring when we're trying to determine, like, would we be switching into large string mode? Because if we were always just querying our current state, we could um, add that code into large string engaged itself. Um, having large string engaged check is constant evaluated and say, oh, OK, um, I'm always going to pretend that we're in large mode. But any checks outside of that, like, are we going to go into large mode, would need to be yeah. updated accordingly. Yeah, that that's essentially it. Um, so it doesn't happen like everywhere, but I think there are at least f f I'd say four or five occurrences of this general pattern with varying amounts of code in the body. Where you know two lines, maybe it's not a big deal, but sometimes it's like five to six lines or or more. We could develop a convention of extracting out that condition into a bool. Um, you know, mm. say bool becoming large equals usual condition and then if is constant evaluated just overwrite that bool to true and then test it and that avoids any sort of you know messy if deafing around up, the condition yeah. itself yeah okay that's a good idea i will make sure to check what the optimizer does if you do that mm. We love the I have had bad experiences crossing from the uh, control flow domain into the data domain and vice versa, making the optimizer very angry. Mm. But maybe they have since fixed that. Well, in this case, what, what I would be suggesting is simply. Oh, I see it's the it's the overriding of the bool. I, I would expect the optimizer it's the, it's to the putting that. the condition into a bool in the first place. Oh, yeah, the optimizer should totally handle that because we're not going to take its address or anything. Um, it, I, I it believe you that you've seen weirdness there, but <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying double check. Is an issue. Yeah, yeah. If, if it is an issue, the back end should fix that. Right, because you don't want it to turn into do bit twiddling tricks to form the bool and then do if bit test on the bowl, which I have seen it do before. 
you want it to actually do the test of the, the original thing. In this case, I think um, uh, because is constant evaluated is going to have the front end emit IL that just returns true or false. Um, it, it's not actually yeah, right, right. a yeah. test for us. It I has nothing to do with is constant it. evaluated. I'm talking about the not constant evaluated path. Mm. OK. When I find my comment that asks about this, I will comment on that with this general potential solution or at least investigation that needs to be done. I don't think that in any place it is erroneous enough to force us to do something um, other than what is here. And we can always file an issue to come back and look at that since this is a high priority, get this checked in ASAP feature. Um, good to think about though, thank you. Um, this is something else that's being added. If we're constant evaluated, make sure we assign something into um, the putter because copying into uninitialized memory is technically UB, so fill it once. So I believe this is where, this is addressing a lot of the object lifetime issues that were coming up um, as we started trying to disable the uh, SSO aspect of things um, because UB is completely disallowed in constexpr. Um, everything. So this this is something that will occur kind of throughout. So anytime we are officially making the new pointer um, for that union, I think this is something that we should be seeing. So in a previous review, I put this in an additional place there it wasn't before because that's somewhere we something we need to be very cognizant of moving forward. Why can I not select this? Okay, I got it. <laughs> OK, can I scroll over? Uh, I have a question about that comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the comment claims that copying into uninitialized memory is UB, uh, but then it, it fills with uh, default constructed character, so a zero value, um, which is essentially a copy. Um, did, I think the mm -hmm. comment, um, did the comment intend to say copying from uninitialized memory? Because I could definitely believe that, that you know you can't read uninitialized memory and expect to get some garbage character. Um, so we need to at least initialize it with something. I, I just don't understand why it says copying into uninitialized memory as UB. That's a good question. This is a comment from Misko. He was, he was adding this pattern kind of everywhere. Not all string elements are characters in C++ sense. So I know that they can be copy into them to create the objects. Oh, wait, but these have to be care like objects, right? Which means they must yeah. be trivial and pod. Which yeah. probably implies that they have to be implicitly implicit lifetime types. Oh, I see to begin. Oh, your lifetime like yeah to begin the lifetime of yeah. the objects is the, is the question what begins the lifetime of the objects and i think these are implicit lifetime types and they just naturally spring into being okay so copying into might have been intended mm -hmm. okay I, I was just confused whether there was into or uh from confusion oh, but okay. uh if, if that if that's good then i'm, I'm happy I'm, I'm there, certain that's what he means by copying into and I, I'm not certain if it's actually UB or not. <laughs> there we go. Um, is there a any edits to this comment that we could make to mention starting the lifetime of things or otherwise? We could maybe rephrase it to avoid the technically UB and say something like, um, Fill the memory once to begin the lifetime, to begin its lifetime. I'm going to take it back. This doesn't make sense to me. We're, we want to assign them here instead of what? Copying into them below? Yeah, that was my exact concern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, I, I think this comment is just a mistake. I think this is a mistake and an error, and we could have lied that bit of code. Uh, the whole if statement? And, uh, well, yeah, the stood is constant evaluated and like treats a sign call. Every day they shovel snow into their pool that looks I heated. will. I'll add yeah. a comment here to investigate it more. Yeah. Um, when he started making changes on top of my changes, he added this kind of throughout. And I have not actually tried to remove them. So you you may be very right. And I think that we did have the conversation when I was initially running into those object lifetime issues um, about the fact that they have to be care-like, uh, whatever the type is, and thus they should have implicitly their lifetime started. Um, so that all makes sense. It's also possible that when he didn't have that, the compiler complained to him, and instead of assuming <laughs> it was a compiler bug, he thought it was UB, right? I mean, yeah. you never know. We're we're on yeah. the bleeding edge. So <laughs> I am. Um, I I do so very we're all kind of flailing around. <laughs> I definitely recall having specific object lifetime issues, and I think I messaged him about it, asking like, "Do you have any idea what's going on here?" This is before I became a little bit more readily expecting a compiler bug. Um, and I assume that I was misunderstanding something. Um, so this may have been in response to that. Um, and the issue may have been fixed with this, or the issue may have been resolved through something else. So there is some debate over whether this pattern is actually required. Um, the type given to basic string is required to be care like. Um, specifically, it should its lifetime should begin implicitly. I don't know if there's a more standardy way to say that. Um, copying to it. OK, there is some debate over whether this pattern is actually required. The type given to basic string is required to be care-like. Specifically, its lifetime should begin implicitly, so we are not necessarily convinced that assigning to putter is required before copying to it. That's a bit of a run-on sentence, but I'm the one who's going to be reading this probably. OK. Same question. Okay, great. Back to constructors. <laughs> uh, we have another constructor concat tag up here. So we have, again, this same structure. Take contents, can mem copy val, but if we're constant evaluated, just false. Um, and this is, I think, the fourth time, third or fourth time we're seeing this. I don't know if Stefan is itching to make a helper function yet. Uh, the sort of helper function I was envisioning would have a lot of complexity to it in terms of understanding what it's doing. Um, mm. It's kind of simpler to just see a pattern and see it stamped out. And yeah, it's, you know, six lines every time. Um, uh, so aside from seeing false type there, um, it seems reasonable. I think this was my debugging comment as I was developing this. OK, cool. Um, I'll err on the side of just leaving this pattern. It's not. Yes, Billy. Could the. Um... Could the if const expert part be moved in to take contents? Probably. Instead of like making a whole new yeah. function thing. Like like I wrote that I if I recall correctly, I wrote that before if const expert was a thing we could assume existed. Yeah. That is a really good question. Where in the world is it? 
It's probably, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's, that's actually a really good question because just because we call it with the true type saying, hey, you could mem copy, it could decide of its own accord. Wait, I'm not going to mem copy it because I'm constantly evaluated to call oh, the other one. Yeah. So where's the other one? Right. Well, I'm saying like like the reason take contents has I think two it's overloads. Mm -hmm. It has two overloads and the caller fills it in is because it used to be there was a single function that did this and had tag dispatch inside. Yeah. And at the time for debug code gen reasons and stuff, I hoisted out the construction of the tag into all of the callers because mm -hmm. string is hammered by the universe and it was worth it. Um, but now that you get to assume is constant, you have is constant evaluated, you could go back to, well, that this all just lives in take contents and um, yeah. It doesn't need the tag filled in in all of the callers anymore. Cool. That is a good idea. Um, I don't want to scroll up. The vague things one remembers from two plus years ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is really codish pseudocode because this is not how this is called at all. Make this bigger so I can see it. Uh, in this pattern. And I think I think what Billy was suggesting uh, that I, I didn't even realize until he mentioned it was that uh, it should also be possible to move the can mem copy val. So like make this not a tag dispatch overload at all. Um, yeah. Unify both of them into just That's single right. take contents. Yeah. And I think. Because the actual mem copying is done by a separate function, we don't need to worry about this function, the take contents being marked as context for 20 container, because it's mem copy val from mm. that conceals the mem copy. I think that saves us. If we leave it, it in a not constant evaluated branch specifically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's not doing anything like, um, uh, what was it, constructing a lock or something? Uh, yeah, making an not... object of you know, non literal class type. Though that's also. There's a paper. <laughs> I do know I was trying to avoid instantiating any of the allocator machinery if we fall fell into the memcopy path. Um, but mm -hmm. it probably I think is I think if is constant evaluate or sorry I think if, if context, context we can do that. Right yeah, it'll, it'll yeah. Be fine. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think fact, you're it's... okay here. Uh, the if counts expert is going to be strictly better for uh, cogen in debug, um, but it's just we haven't gotten around yep. it. But in this case, there's a motivating reason to. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, good note. Thank you. That is a nice improvement that I would not have noticed otherwise. Now, where in the world were we? We were not nearly this far. We have so much more to look at. <laughs> okay.
we are about here. I'm going to remove this because if we end up moving take contents or yeah, take contents around and kind of uh, moving this logic in there anyway, the comment is irrelevant. Okay, here's another occurrence of that pattern that we are debating whether it is necessary, but it's occurring in pretty much the exact same way. Get our fancy pointer, let's do all the things to it here, assign into it, and before we copy. So there on 2681 through 2686, I think hmm. that it seems to look like Oh no, that's just setting setting the fancy putter into the X putter. So into I'm yeah, the contents into which would make no sense. Yeah. Okay, never <laughs> never mind then. Yeah, there are several layers to moving things around in here, but I think otherwise this is an analogous usage of it, from what I can tell. Billy has optimizer news in the chat. I'll let you all heart and thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, basically what I mentioned and what I spoke about doesn't matter. Yeah, screenshot of Beyond Compare, Billy confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's really him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Glad to hear it. All right, this one is, I think, this guy here. String viewish being the template parameter. And then we have similar one, except we are taking also, yeah, size type, position, size type, and, and then the allocator. Look, we're so, we've made, we've made so much progress. Okay. Great. And then we have basic string, but again, this is one that's kind of used internally using one of the tags. Though, shouldn't that also be const expert? Probably. Oh, this is such a long name. Is the non-member that this constructor supports const expert in the standard? I don't know. Isn't that used by the, um, the operator plus um, feature that we added pretty early on in, in the 20 cycle? Th that's that's the concat one we were just looking at. I don't know about this one. Where is this used? I wonder if this this might have, you know, I was wondering if it was like a merge conflict where this oh, appeared this after tiny. MISCO started. Sorry. My VS code was tiny. Oh my Jesus. Sorry. Probably shouldn't say that. Where? I'm not seeing it used. anywhere <laughs> well oh, think, that, that explains um, it i think it's in another file i'm do a, a code base yeah search. x string oh s stream ah uh, the okay. um the basic stream buff um moving moving from our values so this actually this may have been a merge okay. thing where this feature appeared after misco started this pr this has been running so long yeah Okay. Although, well, although I don't think but, any of the IO streams was made const expert. Yeah, this is not required yeah. to be const expert, so it's actually okay. fine. All right. Well, good to know. Where did my code go? There we go. And this guy. Then never mind. Okay. Move aside. Internal function. This is just another occurrence of this pattern. Otherwise, just making it const expert, proxy thing, same sort of dealio. 
And this one just calls the other with equal allocators. Cool. Okay, move assign from buffer. Move assign from a buffer used by basic string buff returns large string engaged. So this is a place, at least initially, um, where I'm thinking, so there are several functions kind of throughout which are making the assumption of I am moving from large to small or from small to large, et cetera. But if we are dealing with a call in const expert time, then everything should be large, I believe. So and there also, are some, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry for interrupting. Um, also, this is, the, the comment indicates it's for basic string buff. Um, mm. So I suspect that this does not actually need to be const expert 20 container unless extra calls have appeared. I do like the addition of no discard. <laughs> of course you do. Um, is typically in our comments used by basic string buff mean that it is exclusively used by basic string buff? Or, hey, this is an X string, FYI, this also is used not just by basic string. I believe it was exclusively used as part of that PR. Um, and it, it yeah, has to be a member function of string. Website. Yeah, and it, it's uh, public because it doesn't bother granting friendship with a for declaration or anything. Yeah, so okay. this one does, does not need to be cost sector. Stringful. Mother of Come on, get out. Oh, my God. There you go. Should we consider adding comments to this function and the, the corresponding constructor to indicate that they're only called from basic string buff colon colon stir? Just for future reference. <laughs> Um, yeah, go ahead, Stefan. I think that was the intention of used by basic string buff, but perhaps we could say used by basic string buff only or used by only basic string buff. Oh, yeah, exclusively is even better. Yeah. That's Perfect. a good word. Uh, where else did you want to add that, Casey? Uh, oh, this was the, called by the constructor. Yeah. Where? Wait. It's this thing, and there was the constructor that takes a tag that we decided did not need to be made const expert. After oh, much right. Discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the same, similar case. Uh, this one. Yeah. I cannot comment on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> the above constructor. <laughs> a comment from down here for consistency except appropriately okay i didn't really need to actually because i'm not using this to this. exclusively yeah how did i miss that one because i just put it in my suggestion not in the actual thing i copied this is a riveting code review. <laughs> okay. This is like all the other code reviews, trust me. <laughs> you, you feel weird because you're the one doing it, but <laughs> trust me, they're all just as boring. <laughs> cool. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and this also applies to the uh, release to buffer there. Um, the same by essential, yeah. yeah. I will just release to a buffer. 
or allocated when it's installed. Small, small screen mode used exclusively by uh, basic string. Oh wait, I should not do com code ticks in a comment. Okay, thank you. Oh, and actually, let me just make the suggestion be across those two lines because we should also remove the context for 20 container. Okay, fantastic. Okay, operator equals rewrapping things because context for 20 container is a mouthful. Oh, I should probably do this here. That is this one. Um, a sign. There is a sign. Shouldn't that be in here? In the same general area. It's uh, down in the modifying member functions. Uh, mm, there we go. Yeah, Thank there you. it is. Uh, yes. This is taken care of. Here's that mem copy about from. And we don't want to make that const expert because it calls this and it doesn't need to be. We have already commented on various take contents. Um, structuring of things here. So now we have construct LV contents. This is a place where Misco did change behavior. So he wanted to double check on this and I believe it's okay, but now Billy's here, so. Uh, assigned by copying data stored in write. If the size of the right is less than buff size, if we're not large string engaged. I think this makes sense. Given that large string engaged is meant to, yeah. I'm not sure I agree with this behavior change. So to be clear, this is saying if right, uh, at one time ha became large and it was copied. Mm. When we copy it, we are going to not potentially be small just because the original was once large. I see. So the so sorry, so the scenario you're proposing is that it was once large, it since has smaller size, but it still has like large string. Yes. Um, it's so still like if it has pointer, capacity of 4,000, if yeah. capacity is 4,000 and size is three. Yeah. This says that a copy of that has to be a large string. Yeah. Even though it could fit. That makes sense. That doesn't seem correct to me. Good call. Thank you. Well, it seems correct, you. but it doesn't seem performant. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. Uh, well, no, like it might actually break the invariance below because of how we calculate mm. the new capacity, but I don't know. The code for that isn't on the screen. Ah, yeah, look. Yep, so, yeah, I think it's actually, I think it's actually incorrect. Like it might produce strings that are large that, that have an allocation, but that um have a capacity smaller than 15. Uh, we do have an early return. Um, oh, but if we don't go into it now, then uh, right. uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's very concerning. I'm reminded of the situation with the bucket array in the unordered containers. <laughs> like, what do you mean clear is super expensive because it walks the whole bucket array? Oh. Well, 
I guess we're not really left. Really brings up the interesting case where right, oh, this is not a sentence. Right is in large mode, but it only contains a small number of elements. The original code would allow the new string to be in small mode when it copied the data, data over from right. The updated code would force the new string to also be in large mode, mirroring right. This would also break the invariance in the code below, assuming size. I believe the original structure should be restored. We also likely need to add an is constant evaluated pathway here as right size in that case does not actually indicate whether we need large mode or not. If we're is constant evaluated, we still have to be large mode even if right size is small. Okay, this is very helpful. We are at 530 actually on the nose, so I'm going to pause review and let you all go here. Um, but this has already been very, very helpful in terms of knowing the you know, finding interesting things and improvements and um, finding issues. So um, thank you all for joining. Uh, feel free to follow the PR further. Thank you for presenting. No problem. All right. You, this has been a productive review. I'll leave some gumball groomed com uh, pictures in the comments. I will stop the recording now.